This course specifically, we're going to look at four key steps to integrating um, different types of exercises for a sensitive nervous system. The first is to start measuring who needs um, sensory motor exercises versus a strengthening or a stretching program. How do we how do we know who needs that? So tonight we're going to talk about profiling our patients, okay, and looking at matching kind of modalities or treatment strategies to assessment sort of questionnaires and, and how patients are presenting in the clinic. So we're going to look at that tonight. We'll also talk tonight about using the Fremantle questionnaires, the series of questionnaires to address and assess sensory motor dysregulation. You're gonna see me on some slides, I tried to go back and, and correct as much as I could, but I see I missed one here. For a long time, we called this smudging. Have you heard that term before? It was kind of a favorite of David Butler for a while. And we'll hear from David Butler at the end of tonight, just on a little YouTube clip where he talks about smudging, right? That term has fallen out of favor because on very specific functional MRI studies, we used to believe that if someone had a problem with a hand amputation, for example, and what we know on the sensory motor cortex is that the face lies next to the hand, we used to believe that actually the facial neurons and the facial recognition area smudged or moved into kind of that missing hand area, okay? So that there was actually a change in the maps. We now recognize from fMRI studies that there are physiological changes in the brain mapping areas, but there's not really smudging, shrinking or enlarging of those areas. So kind of smudging has come out of favor and sensory motor dysregulation seems to be the term of choice at this point. Okay. And then we're going to spend next week looking at using the Fremantle questionnaire. And what if they actually have relatively low levels of sensory motor dysregulation? What would we do for that patient? And then week three, we're going to look at what would we do for the patient who has higher levels of sensory motor dysregulation? And that's kind of how we're going to break up this course. Okay.